just wanted to quickly say thank you to Suman because I feel like a real outsider on Brazilian literature. I'm a big fan of Angola. I love, I've learned, I learned Portuguese, I learned to speak Portuguese in Angola, but my knowledge of Brazil and certainly Brazilian literature is quite small. Um, and in fact, I feel I must start with an admission, which is that shamefully, until about 15 years ago, I was one of those British people who thought of Brazil as being um, um, Caipirinha, Copacabana, and the girl from Ipanema. And if you're looking at me thinking, what on earth is she doing chairing the panel then? I have something much more alarming to tell you, which was that as part of my um, preparation for this evening's event, I went to meet a professor of Brazilian literature at not, uh, none other than Oxford University. And she told me that um, whenever incoming students come to Oxford hoping to take, be chosen to study Portuguese language and Brazilian literature, when they're asked why they're so interested in Brazilian literature, I'm quoting what she says, they say, Bossa Nova and beaches, carnival and football. That was at Oxford <laughs> University. I'll leave that, you can make that what you will. But if any of you here, and there must be some of you who are still stuck at that stage, this special issue of Wasafiri, it just blows to smithereens all the stereotypes of Brazil. It's a really fabulous um, production, and I really kind of, you know, I just want to congratulate Suman and uh, Fabio, who isn't here, because I feel like it's just, if, if it hasn't sort of taught me all about Brazilian literature, it's really opened my mind and left me with a lot of questions. It does ask some very big questions, amongst which are things like, is there or has there ever been such a thing as a distinct Brazil? Um, what might contemporary mean today in Brazil? And posits the claim that there is no such thing as a Brazilian national coherence. So in many ways, you know, it, it actually kind of busts this idea that we have, and many of us have in Europe, of Brazil. Um, so to discuss these questions, I've got, I won't be, I'll be trying not to talk, these three will be talking. At the end, on the, on the far, on your far right, is um, Lucy Greaves, who lives in Bristol. Lucy is a translator working mainly in Spanish and Portuguese and a little bit of French. She won the very prestigious 2013 Harville Secker Young Translators Prize, and in 2014 was translator in residence at the Free Word Centre in London. She's translated two novels, including one by the Brazilian writer Eliane Boom called One Two. Uh, Marília Garcia here is normally based in São Paulo. She is a poet and the author of several books with wonderful titles, among them 20 Poems for Your Walkman, Error of Geography, and the one I really like, Moby Dick, which I haven't read, but I'd really love to know what that's about, if it's not obvious. And born in Rio, she's currently based in Paris on an artist residency, which hopefully we will hear about later. Marilia has been going between Portuguese, French, and English, so if she slips into French or Portuguese in conversation, you just have to keep up. Um, in the middle, Alipio Correa de Franca Neto does so many things. He just seems one of those people who just makes you feel like you spend half your life doing nothing. He flew in this week from San Paolo. He's currently completing a postdoctorate in translation theory at the University of San Paolo, where he also lectures. This follows a PhD in literary theory, including a thesis on Coleridge's The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. We went for tea just before today, and he's a total he's devoted to English literature. Um, he's translated some of the greats, including James Joyce, Shakespeare, the poets Tony Harrison, and most intriguing, I think, Philip Larkin. I just can't imagine Philip Larkin going down in, in Brazil. Um, he also writes his own poetry and plays and has over 100 titles to your name. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, including one um, drum drama verse, I think, called London Eye. Okay, so you're all very welcome. So I've told you, Ben Um